Welcome to Charles Today. My name is David Linton and today's edition for Tuesday the 9th of February comes to you from London. And we start by looking at currencies. We see uh, the dollar index here. Remembering this is my weekly, my daily, my 60 minute chart, my long term, medium term and short term view. Basically we're bearish below the cloud, bullish above. Uh, so in this instance the dollar has turned back to short term bearish. We've fallen away in the last couple of days. Uh, so the longer term downtrend is starting to have an impact. We've seen a recovery in the dollar this year, but we're just starting to fall away again. So our dollar weakness is returning. That means the euro is back above the 120 level against the dollar. Uh, so we are just seeing that uh, rising. So that's looking stronger. Uh, and we have got an upside target to 123.60, which is about two and a quarter percent away from here. There's a very big upside target uh, here, 12 percent higher if we can break that 123.50 level. So that would be quite significant. We still have this uh, long term dollar weakness as a, as a factor. Uh, looking at sterling, that weaker dollar is playing into uh, sterling's hand. We're at 137.74. Uh, so we're looking stronger here as well. Uh, and if we look at sterling against the euro, we're, we're showing strength here too at uh, 114 nearly. So we did actually nudge 114 uh, on the weekend. And so we are just seeing that push towards 117, uh, which is the upside target. So sterling making multi-month highs looking very strong indeed. Uh, Bitcoin had a really big jump yesterday on the news that Tesla had invested one and a quarter billion, one and a half billion dollars into uh, the, the cryptocurrency. And um, so that's pushed all the downside targets off, all bets are off on the downside. And uh, we're resuming the trajectory that we've seen before. So Bitcoin looking very strong. Uh, the S&P 500 index uh, was up three quarters percent. So we're seeing uh, US stocks looking strong there as well. And the same with the Nasdaq, of course, pushing higher. We are seeing the futures uh, slightly down this morning. So our call will be that markets will open flat based on what we can see at the moment. And the same with the Nasdaq uh, looking flat. The VIX volatility is sitting at 21.50. Uh, this is a low level uh, relatively for the last year for the, the fear index. So um, at the moment, markets are taking everything in their stride. The FTSE future is down 0.15% and the cash market market in Germany is up 0.01%, so unchanged. And the same with the cap current, we're actually up a quarter percent here, but little change, still has quite a bit of work to do to make new highs. Japan are uh, very slightly up. The Hang Seng uh, is actually up half a percent, uh, so looking better there, bullish on all three time frames. But China powering ahead up 2%. Chinese stocks looking very strong this year. Uh, having broken that range. So still uh, uh, players that China will be strong this year. India continues higher this morning, up 0.8% after a very, very strong week uh, last week, holding on to those gains. And the Aussie market down just under 1%. So just still struggling to make new highs in Oz. If we take a look at gold, uh, gold jumped yesterday and we're up a further 0.7% uh, this morning. Weaker dollar helping there. The traditional uh, relationship is that uh, commodities rise when the dollar falls. They're priced in dollars. So we see an inverse relationship. So that falling dollar is helping gold and we're back into short term bullish territory. We still have work to do on the daily chart. The fact we put in a lower high is encouraging. The weekly chart still very much in the long term trend. Uh, and the silver chart, we're at 2750 uh, bullish on all three time frames here. Unlike gold on the daily chart, silver is looking bullish because we had that run last week, but it is still looking very bullish indeed. Copper up as well. Uh, so we've seen a real resurgence in uh, copper prices over the last year, uh, and that continues. US 10 year yields are down half percent this morning to 1.15 percent, but the trend has been pretty clear. We were nudging 120 yesterday, uh, and we just are seeing a little bit of a pullback here. But for the moment, it's really looking like 10 year yields on US bonds have bottomed, and we are just seeing that recovery into the long term phase. So that that will be interesting. Taking a look at the energy mix now, we've got crude oil pushing higher, Brent crude sitting at $60.90, so that's holding the gains. WTI up 0.5% as well. We are seeing other energy components falling. We've got US nat gas down 2%. Uh, that's really bucking the trend with uh, the weather that we're seeing, but we are seeing uh, nat gas falling. Take a look at coal. Uh, we're slightly lower this morning, but again, uh, 
the, 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 the range here is 65, 72. That's what we have to watch. Emissions had a strong, really have had a, an amazingly strong week. And we are predominantly holding on to these gains. We do have a couple of downside targets here. Keep an eye on those one minute charts. That's going to be the key. And if we look at uh, MBP, we are down 5% this morning. Uh, and the same with TTF. So yesterday's jump in prices, we're having a reversal on that, even though we're seeing very, very cold weather across Europe at the moment. Taking a look at the German power price, we're at, uh, down uh, €1.20 this morning to 53.35. Still a jump here. It's just a consolidation after such a move. We've got a potential downside of another 3% lower, but we have got upside targets outweighing the trend should dominate there. And if we look at Nordic power, we're falling quite heavily here this morning down 5%. Uh, so keep an eye on those one minute charts. There's no real clear downside target. So we probably will find some cloud support here. That's it for today. Until tomorrow, happy charting. See you there.